Hi, how are you doing? That's that's fine. My name's Andrew. Nice to meet you, Julia. Julia, this is my son. That's Mo. 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 Yep, my son Poet Hi, and my Poet. daughter Marley. Nice to meet you guys. Oh. Have you ever? So you've never seen us out here on the corner before? Uh -uh. No. I don't think so. How long have you been down in Provo? A long time. A long time, and you've never seen. Every Thursday we're out here, except for when it's super cold. Oh. Come yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are you guys doing? So we're preaching the gospel to our. Hey, buddy, relax. He, oh, he dropped his little. We can get you another one, okay? Sorry, bud. Yeah, so we're out here preaching the gospel to our LDS neighbors. Like, what do you know about Christianity in general? Christianity? Yeah. I mean, I am a Christian myself as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. I believe that he died for my sins and that because he died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day that my sins are forgiven and I'm able to be washed clean for baptism. And yeah, I... I feel like I know quite a bit. I mean, I feel like I can talk to your off about Christianity. I feel like we could talk a lot of, to each other about Christianity. Right, right, right. Cool, cool. Well, that's awesome. So when you say forgiving of sins and then washed clean by baptism, what do you mean by that? What? Like, are you looking for a specific answer when you Yeah, that? yeah. What does that mean exactly? I so, just want to know what you believe, really. So I believe that, like, so when I say, like, washed clean, I believe that through the blood of Christ, because we're all fallen, obviously, through the sin of Adam and then because we're carnal, yeah. we're carnal men right. and women that... That because of Jesus Christ that we're able to be washed clean, that it is only through Jesus Christ and His atonement right. that we're able to be washed clean. So interesting. That, Shh, hold on, buddy. Yeah. What I mean, what do you believe? Yeah. So my my first question would be: You say Jesus. Uh -huh. So what do you believe about Jesus? I believe that He's the Son of God. Literal Son of God. Uh -huh. Literal Son of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So He's the offspring of Heavenly Father and yeah. Heavenly Mother. Just like all of us. Just like all of us. Okay. So. In terms of being son of Adam, how would how would you reconcile that with actually being offspring of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother instead of being offspring of Adam? Because really you're just Adam's like sister, not necessarily the daughter of Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay. In John chapter one, what it says about Jesus, it says, in the beginning was the word mm -hmm. and the word was with God and the word was God. Mm -hmm. All things were created through him on heaven and on earth. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that came into being unless it was created through Jesus. True. Right. So in the Greek, in John chapter one, verse one, it says in arche in halagos and the word was mm -hmm. is what we use to translate in. And the word in in Greek is much more expressive that we have it, than we have in English. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it's beautiful. I was going to say, in most languages, isn't it that way? Yeah, I know. So <laughs> what it means, though, is it means as far back as you can go with no point of reference of space or time, mm -hmm. Jesus, the word was already there. Mm -hmm that he never came into existence at a point in time. And then it says, and the word was with God, and that's the was is in again, proston theon, which is in a face-to-face -face intimate relationship with God. And then it says, and he was God. So LDS theology teaches something different. It says that he was not always God, that he's the offspring of heavenly father and heavenly mother. Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. but that's different than what John chapter one says. Mm -hmm. It clearly says that he always has been God mm -hmm. and he created all things on heaven and on earth. Mm -hmm. But the Jesus presented to us in the LDS faith mm -hmm. says that that's not true. Okay. He didn't create Lucifer, he's the spirit brother of Lucifer, mm -hmm. right? And the Bible warns us in 2 Corinthians 11 verse four, it says there's people that will come and preach a different Jesus, mm -hmm. a different gospel who have accepted a different spirit. Mm -hmm. And so that's my worry for my LDS neighbors okay. is that you believe in a different Jesus, a Jesus of Joseph Smith, okay. not the Jesus of the Bible. I like what you say about the atonement. Yeah. That's great. It was I beautiful. Mean, that is, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole center. I mean, that I think that is what it means to be a Christian. And I think that as a member of the, um, of the LDS church, I mean, none of us are perfect. I was actually with a friend, we were talking about this today. We we're like, you know, like, like Jesus is perfect and like God is perfect and the gospel is perfect. But the church, it's not perfect because we're carnal and we're not perfect. And that's okay because we're doing our best. And like the whole reason to be here is to learn to become like Jesus Christ and to do the best that we can. And so I think that, I mean, if we forget that Jesus is meant to be at the center of everything, then yes, we fail. And like, yes, like we're worshiping something besides like what is the most important thing. And I think we forget sometimes because we are carnal unfortunately we man has a short memory i mean right right but so so do you believe so what i guess my question is kind of like to bounce off like you saying like i worry that my lds brothers and sisters believe in a different jesus like what jesus do you believe in then because right right i mean i'm assuming that like just from you shaking your hand and being like yeah like 
the atonement of Jesus Christ? Like, it seems like we believe in the same Jesus. Well, I would say, I'd say first, I wouldn't use the term brothers and sisters. Okay. Respectfully, Julia, respectfully. No, I'd say brothers and sisters in Adam, but not in Christ, okay. respectfully. No, totally. But um, in terms of what I would believe about Jesus, is I believe actually what the scriptures say about him, uh -huh. that he has always been God, okay. and that he took on flesh and died on the cross for my sins. So when I stand before the Father, I stand justified, declared righteous mm -hmm. through the righteousness of Christ. Amen. That when I stand before the Father, I have nothing to offer him because the Bible says, my righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. Mm -hmm. But we're told by Joseph Smith, he says, you have imagined and supposed that God has been God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see you have got to learn to become gods. So that's the teachings of Joseph Smith, right? But what, what bothers me is that you may be worshiping a Jesus Christ, a fiction, one that doesn't actually exist, okay. right? So if we're presented with a different Jesus than the one of scripture, you're ultimately going to end up with a different gospel. So like, one, of my, one of my worries is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not LDS, so I could get your theology wrong. That's okay. But say, say you're, you're married, okay. right? Don't, doesn't your hub, husband have to call you by a secret name in order to become resurrected at the end? No. That's not a real thing? No. So like, I mean, like we, we're all given names. So like in the temple, like we are all given um, a name, a symbol. Okay. When we go through and we receive promises through the endowment, mm -hmm. but it's not, Hold on, buddy. I mean, like it's not through our husband that we receive resurrection. Like it is through Jesus Christ. That he we, doesn't have to call your name. So honestly, like we don't know, like, and that's the thing. Like that's one of those things of God, like that we, and I'm going to like butcher this. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. And I'm going to butcher this because like, I'm still learning. Like yeah. I'm honestly like, Hold I on, remember for a long time, but I'm, I'm still learning and I'm still like trying to go to the temple and trying to learn as much as I can. And I don't want to preach something and like, so forgive me. Like if I like, yeah, yeah, you know, you're good. If I give it to you the way that I understand it, that's fine. I'm carnal. Yeah. <laughs> but the way that I understand it is it's, it's part of like a, like a ceremony of some sort. But again, like we don't know the ways of God. Like we don't know, like it could just be like, that's the way that God is like, okay, this is the best way that I can take to describe it. Like maybe it's not necessarily my husband that calls me. Maybe that is just meant to be like the representation of like, because Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, is he not? Right, yeah. And we are meant to be his His bride, like the church is his bride. And yeah. so for all I know, it could be Jesus that hmm. would call that name. Interesting. And that would call me for it. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm like, really, I'm just... I'm just doing my best to, to live as Jesus would want me to live and to love people and to to support and to serve and to to be who I think Jesus is to other people. Right. And so like I think that's why like I'm talking to you guys because obviously like you guys love Jesus. Like Absolutely. we both love Jesus. And I'd say a different Jesus though. And I'll 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 agree to disagree. I think I think in a lot of ways like we we love the same Jesus. Like maybe like we we believe different things about him. Here's a here's a thought like a, here's a thought for you, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So say say you're talking with a Jehovah's Witness and you're talking with a Muslim uh -huh. and you're talking with a Christian. Mm -hmm. All of them claim to believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Jehovah's Witness says he's Michael the Archangel, the first creation of Jehovah God. Muslims uh, say he's a prophet. The prophet, but he's not the savior of the world. Uh -huh. He's not God in the flesh. He didn't mm -hmm. die on the cross for your sins. Yeah. The Christian will say that he is the eternal God in the flesh who died on the cross for my sins. Mm -hmm. Do they all believe in the same Jesus? Technically, no. Absol absolutely right. So I would say as well with the LDS person saying that Jesus is not the eternal God, but the creation of God in plain denial of what scripture teaches about Jesus, I'd say it's a different Jesus. So when you're saying eternal creation of God. Not creation, oh, sorry, not uncreated. Either. Are you? Do you guys believe in the Trinity then? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. That that makes more sense. Because I, I was like trying to like kind of come to the level where yeah. you guys are. So yeah, that yeah. totally makes sense why, why you're like, yeah, we don't believe in the same Jesus because I mean, in LDS theology, we believe like the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are three separate beings. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. So that's not a good thing. <laughs> in the eternal progression of gods, this is what it says about God in the Bible. Isaiah forty three ten. It says, "Before me, there was no God formed; neither shall there be after me." Uh -huh. Isaiah forty four six. I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. He says, "Look around; I know not one." So I guess my question is. Why do you think that it's so bad to believe that, like, because if if you believe in the Trinity, mm -hmm. and I and I believe that there are three separate beings, yeah. but we both believe that whether it's one person or three people, that they taught to love your neighbors and to serve your fellow men and to love God 
like unto yourself, like and to love your neighbor, like the second great commandment kind of thing, and to 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 help the widow and to lift up the needy and to help the poor. Yeah. And if they both teach that, and I, if you agree that they both teach that, yeah. Then why why get hung up? Great question. On on whether he is one or three. Right. Great question. Because I believe actually in Isaiah 43, 10, it says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, the servant that I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ himself says, uh, unless you believe that I am, ego I me, you will die in your sins. And he's actually quoting in the I am he statements from Isaiah in reference to the eternal God, which is something that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's a great question that you bring up because in the scripture, 2 Corinthians 11, when it warns us about people who preach a different Jesus, a different gospel, and a different spirit, uh -huh. it says there further in the chapter, I know you're getting cold. Oh, you're good. It says that there's people that look like they're doing works of righteousness, okay. right? That they believe almost the same thing that you believe. Mm -hmm. But since they believe in a different Jesus, a different gospel, and a different spirit, it says that the ends will correspond to their deeds. And those deeds are deeds of death. So it's not because you do good things uh -huh. that makes you a righteous person. That's the thing. So just because someone teaches it, yeah. I mean, Muslims teach very similar things, but it doesn't make them a righteous person. I would say this, yeah. I'd say, what is the end of that deed, right? In Christianity, my goal is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And Joseph, well, no, Joseph Smith taught that you must become a God one day. He says, you have got to learn to become gods that you yourself one day will have offspring if you reach the highest level of heaven through obedience to the doctrine, ordinances, and principles, mm -hmm. that then you become a deity, mm -hmm. right? No, so the, so the deeds aren't done to glorify God. They're to become a God and be glorified forever. You would want to be a heavenly mother one day, would you not? Yeah. But it's I not think, biblical. But I think, so do you guys think that members of the church simply do the, the things that we do because we're, I guess, for lack of a better word, earning heaven? Absolutely. Obedience to the gospel ordinances and principles, things that have to be done uh -huh. in order to reach the highest level of heaven. Like Moroni 10, 32, for example, love the Lord with all your might, mind and strength, yeah. and then God's grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. But Ephesians 2 says something totally different. It says that we were dead in our trespasses and sins, uh -huh. right? We're once children of wrath. It says that we are saved by the grace of God mm -hmm. through faith and not of ourselves. Absolutely. And I, and I, with there. I'm, I'm with you with it. And I, I like that you're with me. I'm with you. Yeah. And I, I, I don't believe that I'm earning it. But you have to get, you have to earn it to get there. But I, but that's, that's not the way it is. But we're, we, we don't believe that we're earning heaven. I think a, a better way we believe that we're learning heaven. That by living in this way of life, because God, like, he is on a whole nother level. Like, would you say, like, he is like, absolute purity absolute goodness absolute love like he's all that yeah and if i am if i'm living a certain way i think that eventually i'll be because i want to be with him i want to be in his presence and i i would I'd like to believe that if i'm trying to be a good person if i'm trying to follow the commandments if i'm trying to serve and love that when that time comes that i'll be comfortable in his presence and so i think I, I believe and I'm, and I'm sure that there are millions of members that would agree with me that we're not trying to earn heaven because we can't, that we can't earn heaven. And and the whole trying to get to the celestial kingdom is not earning heaven. We don't believe that keeping the commandments, we don't believe that by going to the temple, we don't believe that by going to church or paying tithing is going to earn our way to heaven. That somehow that, that, Hold on, buddy. that gets rid of God's atonement, but that it's hopefully changing us into a being that would be comfortable. So can I, so in the, in the would, you, would you disagree with that verse in, in the Book of Mormon then? In Moroni chapter 10, verse 32, denying ungodliness, it, it, it claims in that verse, doing all these good deeds, and then it says, and then, right after all those works you do, after and then is, and then right after that, uh -huh. verse 8, the grace is finally sufficient. Daddy. Did that disagree with Paul the Apostle in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, just not of yourselves, not of works, that's any mention of those. Oh, you're doing so good. You're doing so good, buddy. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're doing so good. But, um, he's just cold. But, I know, I, I feel it. I got you, bud. But, but Paul actually expounds on the same thing to the Galatians. He says, in chapter one, like the beginning of the letter, he says, whoever comes to you preaching a different gospel than the one that, that we've given to you, that you've received from us, whether it's us or an angel from heaven teaching a different gospel, he says, let him be a curse, anathema. 
is the Greek. And so Paul is distinguishing the differences between Gospels. The Gospels is what saves men from sins. And so Moroni chapter 10, verse 32, 2 Nephi 25, 23, for by grace um, you're saved after all you can do. Those are two different Gospels. But Paul in Galatians is actually dealing with men who said, well, you know, you can have your faith in Christ. You can you can have Christ, sure. But you just need a small part of the law. And it's just circumcision. That's it. And that's a different gospel. He said that the Galatians fell from the grace of God. That they no, they no longer were holding to a gospel, but a false one. A false one. And the same with Christ. Um, Paul brings that up in 2 Corinthians, I believe, thir uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 4? 11, 11, 4, 4, yeah. 11, 4. Your verse? <laughs> My brain but but he, he brings up that many will come to you preaching different Christs uh, than the one you receive and, and just as my brother said they they will seem they will act like they're doing the same thing they will we'll look at our fruits look we have we have we feed homeless people but Paul points up because they have a different Christ their their ends will meet with their deeds meaning the Mormon church has a different gospel they can't save they, they teach that you must work yourself to heaven in terms of um, your faith plus your works, your righteousness upon Christ. And you call it this because it was the Mormon? Yes. It's like, well, like, or like earning heaven. Well, yeah, well, it's plain in Moroni chapter 10, verse 32. It says, the nine in godliness, I can do this, I can do that. And, and then it says, right after, and then okay. this grace uh, so, is uh, But the Bible teaches uh, the apostles, Jesus, they all taught that grace. Where is this? Moroni. Moroni 1032. Yeah. I just barely finished the Book of Mormon today, so this is great. Good. I just barely finished it today. I just like finished it out. So this is great. I love this. But well, compare that passage where with what when the Bible says oh, in Ephesians chapter two verse eight, by grace and sake faith not by works. Let's see, let's see. I love like it sounds like you guys have at least like read like bits and pieces of the other. I was more. Okay, yeah, good. it should be more. Come to Christ and be perfect in Him and deny yourself of all ungodliness and you deny yourself of all ungodliness and love God with all your might, mind, strength, and in His grace, which will be that by His grace you may be perfect in Christ. That by His grace, it is only through His grace that you may be perfect in Christ. And if by the grace of God you are perfect in Christ, you know why it's not the power of God. So He doesn't, like, He says, like, it is through the grace of God that, that we're perfect. But what about that beginning part when it says denying all ungodliness? And it says loving the Lord your God with all, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Jesus and actually and says then that's... the grace comes in for the perfection. So Jesus actually says that's part of the law. That's probably the best, uh, the most, where all the prophets stand is on that law. Where it says love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I think that Paul... goes with learning heaven. Yeah, well, Paul says if you wish to be justified by doing that, mm -hmm. by receiving grace through that, mm -hmm. he says you are condemned. And you will not be justified before God. He expounds the same thing on the meaning of grace in Romans chapter eleven verse six. He says, "If it is of grace, no longer is it of works. But if it is of works, no longer do you have grace, but death. A debt due to the person who has worked for. It. But grace is something that man cannot receive by works, by you know loving your neighbor, loving God with all your heart, your heart, and strength, which you agree with. You said, well, you know we can." Well, that's a dangerous thing. Paul says, uh, because we can, uh, all men are bound for hell. Guys, it, it, you're making it sound... So, I guess my question is, do you guys think I'm going to hell? Yes. That's a bummer. Well, that's because that's, well, that's, that's why we care about you. That's why we're out here. Do you understand, <laughs> Julia? You Listen, you're not going to win people that way. <laughs> no, no. That, that, that's, the, that's the message of the gospel. The gospel is, is we are on track to hell, but only the eternal God can save us. So do you guys think you're going to hell? No, I'm saved by the blood of Christ. It says in John, Me too. Me different too. Jesus. No, Julia, listen, listen, before I lose you, before I lose you, we're out here because we care about you, number one, right? And I stop because I care about you guys. Thank you. Thank and you. I respect what you're doing. I believe, I, I, I believe you on that. So the reason why we talk about a different Jesus and why it's so important is number one, if you believe in a different Jesus, you're going to end up with a different gospel. Okay. All right, but also because of this, there's two tests of a prophet in the Bible. There's Deuteronomy 13 and Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 13 says, if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and produces miracles, signs and wonders, mm -hmm. but leads you after another God, gods that you have not known, don't believe them. And then Deuteronomy 18 is the second test of a prophet. It says, if anyone claims to speak in the name of Yahweh, right? But the thing does not come to pass. Just one thing, false prophet, mm -hmm. right? So you're told to read the Book of Mormon, to, to, pray, to pray about it, to find out whether it's true, to use your subjective 
human experience and your feelings, whether or not it's true. Well, the Bible tells me Joseph Smith says something. He says he has a revelation from God. He claims to be a prophet, a seer, a revelator, right? Well, the way I'm gonna test him is by what the scriptures say. I'm gonna to go to Deuteronomy 13. If he leads me after another God, gods which I have not known, the ones that have been previously revealed, I must reject him. So Jesus Christ is the eternal God, uncreated. Scripture clearly shows us that he created Lucifer. He's not the spirit brother of Lucifer. Joseph said, you have imagined and supposed that God has been God from all eternity. Mm -hmm. He says, I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. It's from the King Follett discourse. You can look it up. And then he says, you have got to learn to become gods. Okay, I read it. okay. And then in Deuteronomy 18, it says one false prophecy, false prophet. Mm -hmm. Joseph Smith had many false prophecies. False prophet. There's yeah. false prophecies right here from your guys' own literature. These are, these are total copies I must reject him according to God's word. I must reject him because God's word actually protects me. Think about this. Think about this real quick. In the garden. Oh, okay. Hold on. In the garden. In the garden, right? What happens, right? The devil comes and he tempts Eve. He said, you can eat from that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And then Eve's like, no, I can't do that. Can you help your brother, please? He's like, no, I can't do that. And the Satan goes... Did God really say that? He says he doesn't want you to eat from the fruit because he knows you'll be just like God. Joseph Smith told you the very same thing. He said the Bible's missing many plain and precious parts. And he said, and guess what? You can become like God. It's the same lie of Satan. And he says, you need to work your way up there. The way I can be protected to not be deceived is because I have God's word. It says every word of God proves true. He is like a shield unto them who puts their faith in him. Add thou not to these words, lest he rebukes you and thou shalt be found a liar. Jesus says this, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words by no means will ever pass away. Joseph Smith denies the very words of Christ. Jesus says, on this rock I have established my church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Joseph said, guess what? There's a great apostasy. The church failed and I'm here to restore the gospel. And he tempted you with the very same lie, Julia. Test your prophet to scripture. He's I leading you astray. Do not believe you. You say you love God, then test your prophet. I have. According to scripture, according to your feelings. I prayed about President Nelson. The Bible doesn't say to determine things by prayer. It says test the spirits, test them according to God's previously revealed word. Huh? Julia, do it. I know well, you Julia, say you love Julia, God. Julia, think about it. Imagine I was a Muslim. Hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. No matter what I say, you guys are going to talk circles. Because you guys, like, you, you're obviously well prepared. You guys obviously, like, you've got your arguments, you've got like your Book of Mormon and your Bible, and and I like I I academically I can't compete with you guys because you guys you have your arguments, you have your pamphlets, you have these things. It's just the words of your prophet though, comparing it to scripture. We care about you. And I, we, and I care about you guys. And, and I, then test it. And I appreciate honestly, like I appreciate that you guys are here, that you guys are like, because I I honestly believe that you guys like truly believe what you believe and I truly believe what I believe and I, and I can't describe it but you believe it according to your feelings, not according to what God's word says. So you're not actually certain. You're certain right now because that's how you feel, but your whole faith depends on how you feel. Why are you trying to break down my faith? No, I want you to actually find faith in the true and living God who can sustain you when you stand before the Father justified in the perfect righteousness of Christ. A different Christ. And that is according to scripture. That's your opinion. No, that's what scripture says. According to God's word. Okay, well, Julie, well, Julie, we'll put it this way. Your, your argument, what we're only trying to show you is what the Bible says. So your church is literally teaching you according to you the King Paul of this verse. You said you read it. Uh, Joseph Smith said there's more than one God. He said you can become one. Then God says, for me there will no God shall not be after you. Julie, you have to deal with that. That's something that you just have to see and plainly discern. That's okay. And I think, I don't know, I feel a little bit like we had a good discussion going on about Jesus and about how we both love God, we both love Jesus, and how like his atonement encompasses all and that it is through his grace that we are saved. But it is, I'm not going to lie, it is hard to like want to have a good discussion about Jesus and then to have you guys basically be like, you're going to hell. I mean, that's what the scriptures say. I mean, that's, that's and that's how, okay. Well, Jesus that's, spoke that's more okay. about hell than anybody, Julia. And I'm just saying that 
it was like a very positive conversation and I love you guys and I respect you guys for being out here and for talking about Jesus. But it is it's a little bit hard. Like you have to it is hard. you have to understand. And I'm not definitely I'm, hard. Like if I were to come to you and be like you're going to hell. I'd say how do you know that? And yeah. if you tell me it's your feelings, then I'm gonna say, well God's word says otherwise. Right. Well Well Julia, put it this way. In the love passage talking about love. It says in First Corinthians uh, chapter 13 when Paul says love is it says love rejoices in truth. So if, if we see you and we hear you're you're believing a lie and we do not preach the gospel or we do not preach truth to you, the Bible actually says that we're not being loving at all. We're, the Bible actually says we're hating you. Um, we're, we're not loving you. Jesus did the exact same thing when he calls out uh, many men in sin, he calls them to faith and repentance, he preaches no. Um, imagine if I was in a building and I'm on like the top floor and you tell, hey, there's a fire. Uh, but you know, you're like, well, you know, it'd be unloving if you didn't tell me that. So that's exactly the same thing we're doing right now. You're you're believing a lie, and the scripture proclaims it. It says that you're you're deceived by your by the false prophet, by the false prophet, your false prophet. First John two it says, test everything mm -hmm. by the word of God. Test the spirits. Mm -hmm. Paul says, um, test everything. Hold fast to what is true. Mm -hmm. So that's just what we're trying to push you to the edge. We do love you, truly. I mean, I could be at home. I'm in high school, so I could be literally doing whatever. He's in high school, believe it or not. <laughs> Whenever I look at him, like, <laughs> but he 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 has a family. He could be at home with his wife, but because of what God proclaims and the fact that we are out here, we, we love you guys. We truly want you guys to come to faith in the true Christ and the true God. It's something to think about, Julia. Yeah, and I'm thinking um, about it. Just remember the words of Jesus before you go. Okay, He says, "Many will come to me, and yeah. they will come in my name, saying, Lord, Lord, look at the works that I've done in your name." And he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. They claim to know him the whole time. But at the end, he says, depart from me. There's no hope left. Well, I guess I better go figure things out with God then. Yes. And I think that that would probably be the best course of action because yeah. at this point, it's been a good talk. Thank you, Julia. But uh, I'm Thank you so much. I'm ready to go. All right, yeah, you're, it's the, the sun's going down. And, and I am ready to feed You want to take one of these before you go, though? I'll take it. Cool. Hey, you have a good night, okay? okay. You're awesome for stopping okay. and talking with us. Maybe try and change the whole, like, hell thing. That's, I don't think you're going to get much, like, you much can't. love telling people you're going to hell. Well, that's what Jesus preached. Yeah, that's a lot of love, too. Well, you love can't. rejoices in truth. <laughs> <laughs> God hates the hands that shit innocent blood. Since he loves, he also hates. Apparently God also hates me too. So like, that's a new one. The Bible plainly, plainly declares it. It says well, in Julia, Romans chapter three, no uh, one seeks God. No one understands Julia, God. today. Praise God. You can believe today. Oh, believe me. I was praising God all day. <laughs> Which one? Different one though. Oh man, you guys. Julia. I, I wish you luck. I wish you luck. I wish you could be. And like, maybe we'll get to their side. And if you guys are right, I will tell you. I will be like, you guys, you were right. I was wrong. I'm sorry. It says first comes death, then comes the judgment. There's no hope after that. Oh. There's only death, and then there's nothing else I for you. I will love you. We love you, Julia. Yeah, test it, okay? Test it according to scripture. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good night.